You are listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board. Welcome to this episode of CEO Perspectives, a signature webcast and podcast series by the Conference Board. CEO Perspectives take a timely inside look at a range of timely topics that matter most to business leaders. We'll sit down in this series every week and do what we do best at the conference board, which is to provide trusted insights for what's ahead. I'm Steve Odlin, the CEO of the conference board and the host of this webcast and podcast series. And today's topic is something that is probably on the minds of every working uh, American today, and that's career development. How can businesses and how can workers ensure that careers continue to be developed in this strange and wonderful hybrid world. How do we make sure that people don't get sidetracked, that career growth doesn't get stunted, and how can employees continue their personal and professional development? Joining me today is Dr. Jennifer Burnett, a leading voice on nurturing the potential of workers. She's the principal of human capital here at the conference board. Formerly, she had a brilliant corporate career, including a stint as uh, Senior Vice President of Global Staffing and Learning at the Bank of America. Jennifer, welcome. Hi, Steve. Nice to be here with you today. So, Jennifer, there's a lot of change that has happened in the last couple of years. It's been um, awesome and scary and wonderful all at the same time because we've, you know, we've made about a decade's worth of, of change and progress in, uh, in a short time. But let, I think we should anchor in starting pre-pandemic what was the state of career development before the pandemic? And then we're going to come back and say, where are we today? But where were we before? Yeah, definitely. So before the pandemic, I think we were already experiencing so many changes uh, from a, a labor force perspective and companies were really seeing how important it was for them to invest in their employees and to retain and develop those employees. Because even back then, there were challenges in filling uh, roles. And so uh, there was also a recognition that we were experiencing skill gaps in the workforce. So employers were already looking internally and determining how they could really develop their internal employees. And, and employees and workers saw the same thing. They, uh, we've known for years that employee engagement and retention has a a focus on whether someone has the opportunity to develop and grow at that organization. If they didn't find that they they could make progress at that company, then they were more likely to go somewhere else. So between the the interest and, and expectations of the employee and the realization from leaders that it was Uh, really in the best interest of the business to invest in their people, then we really were seeing a a great deal of of focus on career development, even pre-pandemic. Right. So even pre-pandemic, we had a tightening labor market. You know, we had this surge of the younger generation, the millennial generation and Gen Z coming into the market with different needs and and demands than perhaps uh, older workers. And then the pandemic hit. And what changed? Yeah, you know, so of course, what we saw initially was so many organizations shifting to to remote work from a really from a health and safety perspective. And for those organizations who could do that, who had workers who were doing work that they could do in a remote environment or hybrid environment, obviously, that was is probably the biggest legacy of, of the pandemic. And for the first part of the pandemic, people sort of stayed where they were uh, rather than making some shifts. But of course, uh, in the last year or so, we saw so many people leaving their organization. And for leaders, that was, um, that was difficult because we already knew that it was, was a challenge to find people in the external workforce. And now they were losing their internal workforce as well. So there was, there's really a, an emphasis on, on looking at retention. What is it that employees need? What is, of course, how is that aligned with what the organization needs? And where should they be investing in that type of, of development for their employees? Yeah, so pre-pandemic, in a, let's just say an, an on-site work environment, whether it's an office or you know, des- describe any number of, of, of work environments, people are there, right? And we're social 
organisms as human beings. We interact with each other, it's verbal, we're in the same room and so forth. So career development is yes, on paper, yes, it's education and, and you know, yada, 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 but it's a lot of how things are going from an interpersonal standpoint, right? And the informal uh, part, that disappeared on us, right? Yeah, in, in many ways it, it did. So especially for, for companies who are accustomed to that in-person environment, it was, that's what we hear people say they miss the most is that spontaneity of just, you know, being able to sit down with someone in person, go out to lunch with them. Uh, it was e easier in many ways to do collaborative work because you could just all, you know, go sit in a conference room and, and to have those conversations. So the interesting thing though, Steve, is that we haven't really seen productivity decline. So the shift I think has really been in making that adjustment to how can you still be collaborative? How can you still have very uh, productive conversations and, and work uh, in, in, a, in a creative way with your colleagues, but still do it in a remote or hybrid environment? And I'll also note that I think what we're also realizing, especially as more people are coming back into the office and we talk about hybrid, hybrid itself is its own situation where you have some people in person and some people remote. It requires a different type of skill set in how you communicate and interact with each other and recognize that you know you want to make sure that people are participating, whether they're in the room or whether they're they're on uh, on the camera. So these are still adjustments that we're making, but I think one thing that we're definitely hearing is people are saying loud and clear, I'm missing some things, but there are other things that now that I have or become accustomed to that I highly value. So as an employer, how can you help me get the, get the value out of and benefits out of both? Well, so, you know, you described, uh, you know, an, an, an onsite work situation where spontaneity, I'm not sure you use that word, but spontaneity, in other words, the, the, the unscheduled kind of informal interactions are critically important. You know, the ye old water cooler kinds of conversations or just walking down the hall or, you know, you can not schedule those things. So that was our mindset pre-pandemic. Now you're in a, in a completely virtual world, you're on Zoom, you're scheduled minute to minute, all of that informal stuff disappeared. And, and so, yes, productivity measures, you know, by all, by all surveys are holding up as it relates to the business, but the career side, the interpersonal side is, is what people are worried about. Describe that. Right, right. Well, you know, I had an interesting conversation with uh, Joe Gage, who's the CHRO at On Socor's Mercy Health recently on one of our webcasts. And especially as a healthcare company, you, you have to think they have a, a workforce that first of all is frontline in hospitals, you know, really frontline in the pandemic, but also of course have support employees who are in office and have been on site. And I think what was really inspiring about the story of Bon Secours that Joe shared with us is that they took a step back and thought we we do like the idea of people coming back in the office. Some people wanted to come back in the office, but we need to rethink even the office space so that when people come in, that it is more purposeful, more intentional, that the environment itself is set up for collaboration. So I think that that's really interesting that organizations, many organizations are saying, well, we, we like the idea of people still interacting, being in person, but when it makes sense, and how can we provide an environment, again, both in person and even virtually, that is conducive to that? And that we're not going, we're not just going back to the way things were in 2019. And I, I think that's that's really interesting how creative they are. Yeah, and it's a, it's a hybrid world. So what does that mean? Well, you know, it means sometimes you're remote and sometimes you're together, you know, whether it's a couple of days a week or, you know, whatever is going on but when i talk to ceos what they tell me is you know if i don't see people you know it's kind of out of sight out of mind so does that then favor the people who are more apt to come into an on-site 
process? And how do you then have a fair workplace, a fair assessment of skills and move people through career development when there's an imbalance there? That's a great question. First of all, one of the biggest shifts for people when you think about their their career development, how they would like to move either within the organization or or sometimes outside of the organization, the first thing that that they really needed and wanted was that real-time access to learning and development resources. And they really wanted their managers also to be able to support them in that. So visibility is very important, but also skill development. They have to be ready for that next move. There has to be transparency about their readiness for that next move. And so in some ways, with the adoption of of many of the, the technology and tools that companies are using now for learning resources, so much has has moved from in-classroom learning to online learning, virtual learning, but also there's been a rise in the focus on experiential learning. So that's where, whether in person or virtually, to really acquire a new skill, sort of get to that next level and show that you're ready for that next role, you have to demonstrate certain capabilities, you have to practice them, get coaching and feedback. So what what I'm seeing is that companies are saying, well, how do we do that in this hybrid world and have visibility for employees, even though they may not be in person? So what I'm seeing the shift is in more opportunity for rotational work, gig work, projects, apprenticeships, that type of experiential learning, but adjusting it to a hybrid workplace. So that not that that wasn't taking place in person, but we're adopting tools and technology that allow, allow the employees to, to improve and, and upskill to be ready for those new opportunities. But that still doesn't get to the business leaders. So, you know, if, if remember the old adage uh, in the practice of management by walking around, that was the, the great buzz, buzz line for, <laughs> I think, for a number of years, but it, but it's true. I mean, you know, CEOs and business leaders walk around, they run into people, they say hello, and they say, oh, you know, I just met uh, Maria and, you know, I, I, she was great, had a great conversation. These kinds of things really matter in an organization. So what advice do you have for business leaders, CEOs and, and all leaders who are, who are responsible for developing people? How can they create situations and and interactions that used to be informal in a world where you're hybrid or or remote right yeah it is a big shift for for managers and it requires a much more intentional interaction much more intentional conversations because as you said we're not those are not spontaneously happening It also, for those who still are near the office, it may be more intentional uh, in-person meetings, again, purposeful meetings, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be in the office. It could also be having lunch or meeting for coffee, those types of things. The shift though for managers is that number one, they're going through and have gone through that transition of how do I stay in touch with my team? How do I continue to motivate productivity and be aware of how they're um, they're performing their jobs. At the same time, their employees are going through the transition. So they're having to coach and guide them and give them feedback on how to be continue to be visible. Not everyone is as comfortable of, of communicating in, in these virtual ways. So th- there's a lot of pressure on managers and they're of course at the center of, of, of the success of those workplace changes happening. So for managers, they have to be much more intentional. They have to also take advantage of the companies are putting resources in developing those skills for managers, not only on the communication side, how to be collaborative in a hybrid or virtual environment, but of course, we're also hearing that there's those more human centric skills that again, we just we're probably not as front and center in the past of that empathy, focusing on tuning into a person's well-being. Sometimes that's really hard to do when you're on camera with someone most of the time, instead of when you see them in person and kind of see what I call 
their 3D body language, you know, of, of how they're doing and, and how, you know, they, they are feeling about their, their job and their performance and their time in the organization. Right. And, and, you know, 90% of communication is nonverbal. And, and so when, you know, you're fixed on a camera in two dimensions and, you know, you have a little bit of a, a visual, but you're right, this whole body language thing, but you said something also that I think is really, really important. And that's the deliberateness of creating these things. So the, everything that was informal before you know, that was just happening and that we relied on as business leaders now needs to be deliberately created. That environment, that uh, engagement, that ability to interact has to be scheduled or created in a more deliberate way. And this is not something that business leaders were accustomed to doing. Right, right. I'll add that there are certainly some people though who say now when I was in in person, I was very focused on who was physically, you know, in the proximity of the office with me. And now I am on Slack or Teams and I'm interacting with people around the world or in other offices. So to some, the, this has opened up opportunity for more visibility to reach out, to connect with people uh, to, from a mentorship perspective or just a peer learning perspective, not just with their manager. And so for some, they feel like there's more visibility, more opportunity to collaborate across the organization than there was before. So there's, there can be two ways to, to look at this and, and we need to, to take the, the best of, of, of both and really uh, you know, make sure that managers and employees are, are seeing those benefits. We're talking career development in a hybrid world with Dr. Jennifer Burnett. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. As war rages in Ukraine, the conference board is closely monitoring the situation and producing timely and relevant content on a daily basis that will help the business community navigate this global geopolitical unrest. What will the impact be on oil prices, food prices, our supply chain, and what about cybersecurity? How will this conflict impact the way your organization does business around the world? And how will you communicate this crisis to customers and employees? We're gathering the very latest content on our website. Just head to conference-board.org and find trusted insights to help you and your team lead with confidence. Welcome back to CEO Perspectives. I'm your host, Steve Odlin, the CEO of the Conference Board. And today we're talking to Dr. Jennifer Burnett, an expert in career development. So Jennifer, we've talked a little bit about what managers, leaders, CEOs, C-suite should be doing to advanced career development in a hybrid world. But now what can individuals do about their own development? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. See, you know, all of the things that, that organizations are providing to their employees will, will not be beneficial unless people see value in them and take advantage of those opportunities. And so for employees, I think they really need to, to look at what their own skills, capabilities, strengths, and interests are, and be sure to communicate that clearly with their manager and share that in, in whatever way makes sense with the organization. Because again, we are using more tools and technology to help people identify what potential career paths may be, but it requires employees to provide that information to essentially complete their own profile, much like they do on LinkedIn. They have to do that for the employers too, for, for the employers to see not only what their next role might be, but there are also future roles that they may be a great fit for, but they have to share that information. That's the first step. I'd say the, the next step is really to, again, be a self-directed voracious learner. So whether it's opportunities and resources that your employer provides or even outside of your organization, that continuous learning mindset is critical in today's world because things just are changing so rapidly that it's important to, to continue to reskill and upskill your own capabilities for those, those next opportunities. Right, but even if you do that, it, an individual, you, you, you go, you're brilliant, you're upskilling, you're training yourself, but if people above you don't know that, 
it doesn't matter. I mean, if a tree falls on the forest and nobody's there to hear it, it doesn't make any noise. So the issue, so the, the challenge for individuals is without looking like a brown noser, because in, you know, in a previous world, if you went and sang your praises or, you know, called up your boss and said, have a, you know, that was kind of viewed negatively, but now you have to, as an individual kind of break through on your own. There is some responsibility here. How do you do that deftly? Yeah. I've always felt like it's really the individual's responsibility to advance their own career. So the manager is there to support them, to guide them, to perhaps remove barriers to that next step. But it really requires initiative on the part of the employee. And it is up to them to not only rely on their managers for for feedback or also to, to provide information about what might be available, but especially in a hybrid world, as we just said, the manager has less visibility to how they're performing their job, not necessarily what they're achieving, but how they're going about it. So they have to rely on also information from peers, from customers, from clients, and even from the work itself that surround out that picture so that managers and others leaders in the organization can see this is how they're doing their job. Here's what they're accomplishing. It can't just come from what the manager observes or is aware of. But again, it's back on the individual to, to, to make sure that they're getting feedback and visibility from many sources, not only their manager. Yeah, so it comes back to something you said in the first half, which is its intentionality. It has to be deliberate. It has to be intentional. And it has to be professional, of course, right? So people need to ask for feedback, you know, from their managers. Take the time and say, "How am I doing? You know, do you have any suggestions for me?" I and express your point of view. I'd like to, you know, not in a, you know, in an abrasive point of way, but, uh, uh, you know, I want to move ahead, or I'd like to do this. I'm thinking about this. What do you think? So there needs to be more deliberate dialogue, doesn't there? Absolutely. More deliberate dialogue. And also not just about, again, what you feel comfortable that you could do, but even something that you're curious about, because that's the whole idea behind things like gigs, rotations, or, or project work is, well, I think I might be interested in this other area that the organization has that I haven't worked in before, but I would like to try it out. I'm not sure I want to leave my current role yet, but if there's an opportunity for me to spend part of the time over in that area, try out a project, work with a larger team, most individuals are going to have to raise your, their hand for that and say, I'm, I'm, want to learn more about something that's very different from what I'm doing today, but I feel like I have related skills that, that could benefit the organization. And you really have to seek those out. Yeah. And what I always liked as a CEO um, was if people came to me and said, what do you think? You know, I'm thinking about this. What do you think? You know, what, what other things do you think I should be doing? So that it's, it's a dialogue back and forth. And, um, and I, I think it's really, really key to this. So, you know, the skill sets that were required for a completely in-person working environment are great. And those are necessary now in a hybrid world, but there are additional skill sets in a hybrid world that are required in the workplace that were not necessarily required before. Talk to us about some of those skills. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think what comes to mind, what's top of mind is what we've really touched on already is really improving or shifting some of the communication skills, collaboration and interaction, interpersonal skills that we may have taken for granted before. So communication skills, for example, when you're in person, we rely a lot on our verbal communication skills in a more hybrid or remote environment. You'll find that you're you're writing more, more emails, more, more chats, more texts, and more documents. And so that shift, some people feel stronger in the verbal skills versus their, their written skills. Communication, interaction, we've also so talked about. It's very different interacting with people on camera, on a Zoom or Teams, than it is in a, a 3D world. And again, we already said where you have sort of those, some of those nonverbal cues. So those come to mind uh, sort of first. 
But there's also things that people have had to adjust to in the remote and hybrid world that they they really didn't have before, which is just that blurring of lines between work and personal life. And so they've had to be more flexible to think about when they turn off work and and how they balance um, that their their personal life even more so than before. So some of those skills like resilience, flexibility, adaptability have become even more important in in today's workplace. Yeah, and and, uh, anytime you generalize, of course you're wrong, right? But (laughs) I'm gonna generalize. uh, you know, you can you can bucket people into 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 two buckets, uh, introverts and extroverts. And in a in an extrovert world, they're very comfortable engaging in dialogue, engaging verbally, you know, uh, going in and inserting themselves in networking, talking to their bosses, you know, da 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 da. Introverts are a little less comfortable with that typically, but introverts, on the other hand, are very comfortable in a written world where they can go and they can think and they can compose their thoughts and then reduce them to writing. So they're actually better at that. In a hybrid world, it doesn't actually, what I'm hearing you say, favor one or the other, but you need the skill sets of each. And so it it really requires that extroverts learn these brilliant skills of introverts and vice versa, I guess, to be, uh, to be successful. Is that, is that a, Fair it way is. of articulating. It is. We, we probably, you know, we tend to, you make it, you describe it well. We tend to rely on what we're most comfortable with or we think are our strengths. And now we're in an environment where that might not be our, our comfort zone, but we're going to have to do it anyway, because that's uh, how, what we need to do to be productive and to interact with other people. Um, and, and sort of back to, I think maybe the, the theme has been, um, uh, intentionality or also taking initiative uh, sort of through our conversation today. And again, those are skills that, that people may not have really practiced uh, before, but are essential for them to be successful in a hybrid or remote world is, is really to, to be intentional, to take initiative, not only for their work, but as we're talking about today for their careers as well. Yeah, so career development in a hybrid world requires not only to rely on the manager, the leader, but also to take some responsibility. You said that was really the case before, but, but almost more so now, to be intentional about it, create opportunities deliberately, to work on these skills that are not necessarily in your sweet spot because you have to be able to deploy them in order to develop your career in both a remote environment and in an office environment. So this is a, this is a brave new world, Jennifer. It is, it is. It, it's, we shouldn't underestimate the, the, the difficulty of this. And I think we're still very much in a transitional phase. And so as, as organizational leaders look ahead, I think it's important for them to see how they can support the employees for, and the managers in continuing to make this transition. We're, We're really not there yet. Dr. Jennifer Burnett, thank you for joining us today and sharing these great insights. Thanks, Steve. And thanks to all of you for listening in to CEO Perspectives. Every week I'll be joined by a prominent business leader or a thought leader on a whole variety of subjects. We'll cover topics in geopolitics, economics, human capital, ESG, marketing communications, and more. Please share CEO Perspectives with all of your colleagues, your friends, your grandchildren, anybody who'll listen to you. I know that they'll want to hear. I'm Steve Odlin, and this series is brought to you by the Conference Board. You've been listening to a podcast from the Conference Board, your source of trusted insights for what's ahead. For the latest insights to help guide your business through this time of geopolitical unrest, We have daily and relevant updates on our website at conference-board.org.